This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is our Advocacy in Action feature, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. How is a patient yeah. supposed to know, or a physician, which are the best companies or the best technology out there to an analyze one's tissue? Yeah, I think there is a, a level of anxiety not among the patients but all the doctors because the technology is going so rapidly fast. What to do? What I did three months ago, maybe not any more appropriate. I think the key issues is there are multiple companies available. And the US, I tell you, you are blessed. When you go to other countries, this is not available. They cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really, we are in luxury. This is a good dilemma. We will figure that out. I have no doubt. There will be technology developing where you get a printout so long, okay? And in the beginning, we will understand only so much of it. That's all okay. We will learn as we go along. I think the key element is that this genetic testing is done at the time of diagnosis to really plan treatment strategies. There are companies like Caris, Life Technology, Foundation Medicine, Response Genetics, you will find them. It's not a problem. Talk to your doctor. It's usually DNA-based. There will be more coming. Gene expression arrays will be coming for prognostic. This all will develop. But I think the key is when you undergo, when the tumor is being treated and the tumor comes back or there is a recurrence somewhere and it's resected or you have an ability to biopsy, do it. It is not anymore the same tumor. Don't make treatment decisions two years later after the initial diagnosis and they test the tumor there. It's not the right thing anymore. When I did that many years ago to my, I sent always to response genetics because it's in LA on campus, they said you did a mistake, you sent it already. I said, I'm not doing a mistake, you will test it again. It has changed. And I was right, it did change. So colon cancer, I have now suddenly heard two amplified tumors. Mm -hmm. Now, will it be all? No, but I have suddenly patients with more amplification than any breast cancer I ever had because it's an escape mechanism to cetuximab. We will see and much more of this and the fragmentation of the patients will be huge, which is a good thing because here for these patients, we will find more and more treatments which may impact your outcome. I have no doubt about it. Every little bit of knowledge that I gain about my tumor even if I don't have a solution, I still have a sense of control and empowerment because knowledge at least makes me feel like, okay, I know what's happening to me. I may die, but I know my path. But being out there without being able, and I don't know how you feel, Shirley, but does it not make you feel at least there may not be a solution, but knowing makes you feel some relief, a comprehension of what's going on in your body. I feel a, a strong sense of uh, a mission to inform other patients about what is happening with what the doctor just described so eloquently so that we can put a push on doctors who may come screaming to this new technology because what I'm hearing is that for some who have practiced a long time and with all due respects to their lifelong dedication to whatever cancer they've given their time, they might find this a little frustrating and how do I deal with all this information that the doctor just, just described. So I think we need, it's incumbent and Selma, it's wonderful that you're doing this program, that we get the word out. And secondly, I hope from the uh, patient point of view that the costs of this testing come down it so it can be accessible to all patients no matter what their income or their assets. Someone like myself and Shirley were very blessed because we are able to interface not only perhaps with our community-based physicians but also with academic physicians that have easy access and a belief in the technology. Part of my frustration has been hearing doctors say it's early yet, we don't know, it's just research, it's not important, and it's extremely frustrating because 
our, we own our tissue, but we need a doctor to be willing yeah. to let our so, tissue so, go out. So a couple of thoughts. I think Selma made a very important point. If you work with your physician, you give blood or DNA or something to test, you're becoming part of the team. Mm. There will be not all um, answers to all questions, but you are part of the solution. And this is a completely different mindset. Mm -hmm. So if you say, I need this and this from you, you're part of it. You, this, you play a role. Sometimes I say, I don't know if this works. I think it makes more sense here. You work this out because you're in a gray zone. But not looking for it, I tell you, will be worse decisions. Mm -hmm. okay. The other thing is, I think patient advocacy is a much stronger hold than they weekly think. So there is a huge initiative I'm involved, which is called Cancer Commons. This is all patient driven. They will, have, they will do an initiative called Donate Your Data. Mm. Think about it. When all patients will donate the data you're doing on trials, on, on outcome, and we collect this data just from this country or the rest of the world and find new links which are not possible otherwise, it will revolutionize. You will be the driving force. Right now, we have a clinical trial there, we have a clinical trial there, we have a clinical trial there. If these guys, not the industry, because they will not do that, but you can, you have your data, you know your outcome. If this effort is combined and we can, in real time, identify a hit to one drug, it will translate in fast drug development. You have the power. We don't. Because when we do a clinical trial, I under sign a CDA. I, I, I cannot just say what data we have with the company. Mm -hmm. But you can. You're not signing a CDA. So there will be, you have a lot of power to come and play a big role. And the US is leading worldwide for that. This doesn't exist in many countries around the world. So I think this will be a new wave where you play and you will be put in the driver's seat, which we cannot do. So all this work, all these ladies have done is amazing because this is coming to our point where suddenly we can together make the changes and mm -hmm. development so much faster. And it works, we know it works. In this early pilot in lung cancer, new mutations were found, this drug is now approved. Would never happen with a combined effort of patients and looking at unique subsets and outcome. And make the information flow, not waiting three years after each trial. Thank you.